with our, the first section of this morning. Uh, we got a great uh, couple of sessions before the break. Uh, we're going to start with Sandy Lohr from Matchcraft. And then following that, we're going to have uh, Clinton Alver from Live Person. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about messaging. Uh, before I get Sandy up here to, to get started, a couple quick housekeeping announcements. Um, first of all, uh, I'll make this point a couple times today, but we want to make sure speakers stay on time. We've got a very busy agenda today, and we want to make sure that we have ample break time so that uh, if, if all the speakers could be very mindful of the clock um, and try to wrap up before the time runs out. Uh, otherwise, I, you know, we're going to have to um, uh, urge you to, uh, to do so, and we would rather avoid that. So just um, please be mindful of the clock if you're a speaker. And then uh, tonight, uh, we're having a, at 6.45, we're meeting again to hop on the bus and we're going to the, uh, I gotta check the uh, Prasat Pravan Temple. So it's gonna be a pretty amazing dinner tonight. So you wanna make sure you don't miss the bus. So uh, we wanna stay on time and uh, 6.45, be ready to go. So with that, we're gonna get started. Sandy, why don't you come on up? Please enjoy me welcoming Sandy Hiller from uh, Matchcraft. She's gonna talk about uh, search marketing in the, in the APAC region. So Sandy? Thank you, thank you, you Charles. A shout out to Toppen for a great dinner last night. Thank you for hosting us. It was a really nice venue. So this morning, I'm going to take a minute just to introduce Matchcraft, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the stats for what digital readiness looks like globally, as well as in Asia Pacific. And then let's talk about how we reach those businesses. And we're gonna talk about how we need to figure out collectively how your company can be the one that local businesses choose to do business with for their marketing needs. And that's stolen from some research that Charles and his LSA group did, which I'm sure you're going to hear about before we leave here. So with that, in terms of Matchcraft, this is our footprint across the globe from the Americas to Asia Pacific. And we have 43 countries that are represented there. 23 different languages, and our headquarters are in Santa Monica, California in the US, and we have the opportunity to be serving clients through a channel partner model. So we actually do not work with local businesses direct. We're a technology company with social search and display, and we've been doing this since 1998. And so our secret sauce that we uh, that, that brings us to market and differentiates us is both our bidding and budget management tool, our algorithms based on literally 19 years of machine learning and looking at how we can serve 50,000 to 60,000 campaigns across all verticals and being able to do that in a way that uh, performs very well both in bid and budget management. So going in on an hourly basis and looking at bid adjustments, higher and lower, for search campaigns, and then looking at ways to remarket across the different multi-channels. So one of the things that I think is important is just look at stats globally. The, the first few slides here are based on 2017 Hootsuite data. So very relevant, taken in January of this year. And when we look at the world's population and the percent that is online, it's 50% of the world's population is online. 37% are social users, and most of those are mobile. And the number of smartphone users penetration across the world is 66%. When you look at globally, the penetration of online users, the North America has the strongest percentage, not surprising, 88% of the population is online. Western Europe is second with 84%. And Eastern Asia is 57%. Australia, New Zealand, 68%. Southeast Asia, 53%. Central Asia, 48%. South Asia, 33%. So quite a variety within the region of online readiness, but I think you'll see the increase in what's happening with growth. So also by Hootsuite in January of this year, the consumer growth in Asia Pacific is something to note with 15% year-over-year growth in online 
users, internet users, and the big winner is mobile social with 35%. Of course, you'll get copies of these slides. So looking at how businesses are spending money, Asia Pacific and digital advertising spend this year will be a $57 billion market. When you look at the growth of that year over year, that's a 9.5% growth. And when you look at 2016 actual over 15, that was 11%. And if you look forward to what is forecast based on eMarketer for 2017, the forecast for 2018 for Asia Pacific is an additional 8.4% growth. When you look at different country makeups and where the dollars are being spent, China is the largest market, Japan is the second largest. And you will see too that if you see the trend from 2012 to 2018, the fastest growing market is Indonesia, both in 2016 to 17, as well as the five year trend of looking at 2012 to 2017, Indonesia is the fastest growing 1,257%. And the second is India with 229% growth over that five year period. When you look at Japan, it is the slowest growth market in that five-year period, Japan has only had a 12% digital growth in terms of ad spend in digital. Happy to talk more or to share the, the entire study if you'd like. So one thing that is important to me to learn from this conference, I always get more out of this than I give, trust me, is where we are in terms of Asia Pacific in how we approach local businesses with digital solutions. So I was fortunate enough to speak at a Google conference last year in Tokyo with over 300 of Google's premier partners. And one of the things that I learned was when we, when we were talking yesterday and Panana, you shared the three waves, that there's a lot of us that are still in wave one. And wave one being we have this legacy business and we know that we need to sell digital, but making that transformation and leap, we're in various stages, I would call, of commitment of that. And then the need now that we've committed for wave two, which is to simplify our offerings and to really approach the market in a simplified way, I would say that we heard yesterday from some really creative approaches, but not all of us are there, let alone wave three, which is coming your way, which is that now there's this movement um, that's being tested that we heard about, which is if you win, you pay us, and if you don't, you don't pay us, which is really being invested in the outcome of the marketing based on transactions, and it's a guarantee. And if you think about this equation that local businesses want to deal with one company for their marketing needs, and you picture where your company is in that equation and how somebody's marching in with a guarantee, how are you going to compete? How are you going to be that one? Let alone if you want to study what Dell is doing or Oracle is doing, and they're walking into your local business and they're saying, we've got your computers, we have your payroll, your accounting, we have your security, we have all of your marketing needs, all with one person. And they're walking in with a solution with everything you need to run your business with one person calling on you. So how are you gonna compete? How do you stand out and make sure that your solutions are going to be the one that a local business will trust you in order to handle um, their business. So it's the noise, right? It's this cluttered marketplace and understanding the consumers. And my challenge to you is to, is to suggest that you're in the perfect place and time to understand this and be the expert for your local businesses and to aggregate the data that you have that's exclusive to you. So yesterday we, we, ha we saw the example of Sylvia the florist in the Philippines. I can't remember, Manila I think she was. 
And the fact that Sylvia alone probably has data that is limited to her business, that's all she could do on her own. But going through one of our client services teams that was calling on them and being able to look at other florists that are in Manila and looking at their data and looking at other businesses and working with, if they were working with a company like Matchcraft, you would have the aggregated data of 19 years, categories, and different geographics, geographic locations, and being able to put all that machine learning, all that data, so that Sylvia gets the advantage of you walking in with this technology behind her that she can afford because you're aggregating that across lots of Sylvia's. And so that's, um, that's an opportunity that I don't think we can miss. And I would just encourage you that think about other data. If you have a legacy company that's print, and if you don't know what a print campaign does alone, what a digital campaign does alone, and what mirroring the two and putting those together and looking at how messaging can complement each other, then you're missing out on an opportunity for you to differentiate and own the market and understand how you can walk in and be that trusted source by aggregating the data, by being the one that is coming in with something that's unique and letting that local business focus on what they do. They want to make widgets. They want to have services and products and spend time on, on those areas. So local businesses can't get a break. They've got all these big box stores that they're competing against. Then along comes the e-commerce team with Alibaba and Amazon and Airbnb disrupting them. They've got competitors all the time popping up with new storefronts. And they need help. And that's why, again, I think that you coming in with the technology solution and the expertise related to marketing, advertising and marketing, is what will allow them to compete against the pricing and the, the volume that these big box stores can get and the corporations can get, along with the selection of products that they bring to market. And they can focus on ways that they're going to compete with that while you are bringing them affordable technology solutions as well as your expertise in understanding the market. So let's talk about approaching them. So when, when we talk about different sales approaches, there are several and there's pros and cons for all of these. So one of those is a bundled approach. You can go in and you can have a preset model, good, better, best. It's simple. Your sales reps get it. And you're walking in with this selection of multi-channel solutions for a local business. That sounds great. And if one size fit all, that would be perfect, but it doesn't. And so I would encourage you, if you're looking for a bundled approach, there's two things I'd recommend. First, verticalization of that approach so that you, again, are the expert of the consumer path to purchase, that noise of clutter, that you nail that by vertical. And the other is to have an opt out. If you've got this package, and it includes SEO, but the company has already invested with Andrew's team and is working with SEO through him, please allow them to opt out because there are things they're going to be doing that will absolutely um, damage the work that they've already paid for a professional to be doing. So just be careful in one size fits all and good, better, best, and make sure you're verticalizing and have opt outs along the way. The next, is uh, one that I hope that we can all agree just shouldn't be done. And it's the old days of product selling, product dumping. In the US, we're quite, we're quite crass, so we call it th show up and throw up. And it's when you're opening up your briefcase and you have whatever they need. Here's my menu. I've got hundreds of SKUs, hundreds of products. You tell me what you need. I've got the solution for you. So many problems with that, I won't spend a lot of time, but number one, that poor local business doesn't have a clue. They're expecting you to know what they need. They don't know what they need. So the menu approach, I would encourage you to dump. So then we all jump from the other extreme to consultative. We go in and we talk and we learn about their business. 
This is fantastic. We're strategizing. We learn, we come back, we whiteboard with a team, we use an agency approach. We have lots of time. We go back and we talk to them again. But we forgot one thing, and that's how to ask for the order. And it can be very costly, and I've seen this happen uh, firsthand. And I would just encourage you on the, the consultative approach, there is a time when you have to ask for the order. And it's great to know everything there is to know about a business, but you certainly need to also uh, ka-ching, ka-ching for yourselves, cut the chase, and get on and try something. Because the truth is, it's a journey. You're working with that local business. You're going to be transparent and earn their trust, in my view. And if you're doing that, you're walking in and you're not afraid to start and then go back and say, at the end of the month, this worked, this element didn't, we'll make changes and do what's working and keep improving upon that journey and that sales approach as we go. And the last, of course, is the uh, we know what you need and changing that and walking in. There's a lot of technology companies. We're not one. This isn't a pitch for me, but there's a lot of companies that will help you with pre-call planning and making sure that you can walk in and you're educating that business about their industry, about what they're doing in their consumer path to purchase, about uh, their customer profile. You are helping them. You're understanding what their social presence is, what their web presence is, doing assessments for them, walking in, educating them before you've even had your call. And that's a suggestion and, and something that I think would make sense for everybody. The other thing I heard yesterday was collaboration and companies working together. And this is something that uh, we certainly believe from the Matchcraft front, just looking at partners that we have in this room, we do certain things. We do search, we do social, we do display. There are a lot of things we don't do. And so our partners with Mono, for instance, have websites. And so in some cases, we're pushing data to our partners. In other cases, they're pulling data from us. And it all helps. If we know the conversions that are happening on, on a Mono website, we are able then to use that information for campaigns and having the advantage of those campaigns working better with that data as it happens real time. When we look at uh, information that is being pulled from us, Camellia is a good example with the analytics and the dashboards that they have for multi-channel and being able to look at those dashboards and being able to pull in our data in terms of the metrics that are happening from these marketing campaigns and, pulling that in and being able to uh, look at it that way. And I would encourage you to talk to clients that are here and people that look like you from other regions, tell at least is here from Brazil and learn from them. And um, if, you, if you don't want to put together your own tech stack and look at that, you can go to web.com or others and being able to look at how they can white label the, the stack that they've already put together for you. So those are all opportunities. I'm not mentioning everybody, but there's the Got Yous, the Uberalls, the Planet's World. Everybody that's here has something to offer that's unique. And it certainly would behoove you to find out who's working together, because none of us, at least from the Matchcraft, Matchcraft pers perspective, we can't do it alone. And we um, aren't going to try and be experts at everything. And so we do work with others. And there's many others here. Uh, the nav ads with location-based information, all of this is very helpful and it helps that local merchant and that's how we look at it. If it's helping that local merchant, then it's helping all of us. So <clears throat> the summary is really uh, today's world demands that you differentiate and figure out what it is that you can offer that's unique about your data points, and how you're going to stand out and be that one vendor that has the trust, and I believe that includes transparency for a local business to choose you. And that also means change from my end, uh, not being just a technology company from Matchcraft, but we spend a lot of time and helping with go-to-market strategy and how to consult and advise. And that's also a differentiator of our company is because we understand from the client side what it's like 
to be there in front of small businesses. That's where we come from. And so I would just encourage all of you to find that, what's unique to you, and make sure that you can help local businesses today win for tomorrow. I truly believe their survival depends on you, and probably your own survival depends on finding that. So thank you. Thank you, Sandy.